Okay, so this video is on the five uh, top causes of foot pain, similar to our last video in our catalogue on uh, the five most common causes of ankle pain. You can certainly look that one up. Foot pain can be very challenging to treat uh, and very debilitating. So the first one we're going to talk about is plantar fasciitis, which is an incredibly challenging thing to treat. Uh, it makes up about 10 to 15% of presentations in terms of foot pain. Um, and most of the pain is over the big toe side of the heel here, so we're going to mark it on the, on the underside of your foot. We're just going to show you what the plantar fascia looks like on the undersurface of your foot. So it's just below the skin, travels um, from the heel all the way up to the toes and is, is responsible for helping to hold up your arch. Now most of the pain with plantar fasciitis is around um, the big toe side of the heel as is marked there. It's usually worse in the morning after a few steps, it usually gets better as you warm up during the day and usually get pain after exercise not during and it can be quite debilitating. Now we're just going to, this is what it looks like from the side. So the plantar fascia is in red there running from the heel up to the toes. As I said it's responsible for holding up uh, your arch. The good news is that about 80 to 90% of cases uh, resolve after 9 to 10 months, but there certainly are patients where it persists for a long period of time and can be very difficult to treat. Now, the second condition we're going to talk about is a Morton's neuroma. And a Morton's neuroma involves um, the nerves that are on the top of the foot that go down to the toes. So we're just going to draw them for you here. So they come in a Y shape. So they go straight and then they divide. And so each um, one that comes up the middle of the foot divides to give a branch to each toe. And so each um, toe gets at least two branches. Now, what happens to the neuroma? It forms below the Y area usually. Um, and it's that yellow bit there. And what it is is a bit of scar tissue around the nerve. Now, it often feels like a pebble in the shoe. You often get a sharp burning pain in the ball of the foot or the toes. Um, it's uh, You can get some numbness associated with it, affecting often one toe, but more than sometimes two. And it's often worse with narrow shoe wear because it's really closing up the position around that, that nerve. Um, now, the third one we're going to talk about uh, is midfoot arthritis. Uh, now, midfoot means middle of the foot, so it's that section there. That's where you often get the pain, often more on the, on the underside of the foot. Just to look at the bones that are involved with midfoot arthritis. So it involves the navicular, which is that horseshoe bone, shoe bone there, um, the middle cuneiform, which is just marked out there for you, and something called the medial cuneiform, which is on the big toe side of the foot. Um, and those are the bones that form together. The joint between those bones and the navicular, where I'm just going to mark it in red there, is often the one that gets arthritis in it. Now, many people ask me then, well, what is uh, arthritis? Now, um, we're going to explain that for you here. Hopefully, in some diagrams that will help. So uh, what arthritis basically means, if you were to look at the foot on this x-ray here, and that's looking from the top of the foot, and we've got our eyes and we looked at it from the side rather than looking at it from the top as we're just showing on the diagram here, um, then what it would look like, we've got two bones side by side forming a joint, and one's called MC, so that's the medial cuneiform, which is that blocky area we, we marked out before, and the other one's what's called the navicular, which is that horseshoe bone, so that's what, what it would look like from the side where those two bony ends meet, okay? Now, what happens in arthritis is that um, you've got a covering of the two of the two bones called cartilage, and cartilage is nice and smooth. Um, it's sort of like the inside of an eggshell, and and then underneath that is the bone, roughly where that face is there. And unfortunately, the bone's got the consistency roughly of sandpaper. It's quite rough, um, and it doesn't allow the joints to move easily. So, what happens in arthritis is is that some of that nice smooth cartilage that's on the top wears away, and so some of that frictionless stuff wears away and that leaves the friction stuff underneath the sandpaper stuff underneath what then happens is it then rubs off the nice smooth cartilage on the other side on the bone the, the, the covering of the bone on the other side the cartilage and so then you start to get sandpaper rubbing on sandpaper rather than eggshell rubbing on eggshell um, and that happens more and more and more and so eventually you get this really rough surface rubbing on rough surface rather than a smooth surface and the joint can't move very well anymore and becomes quite painful now to help with that often you can wear shoes called a rocker bottom sole which you've got so the bottom of rocking horse um, configuration to it, or you can get an injection to the area. They're both useful for symptomatic treatment, um, but occasionally we need to actually fuse the joints so those joints don't move anymore so the pain goes away. And usually by the time it's got to that point, the joints aren't moving very much because they're quite rough anyway. Now, the fourth condition uh, is hallux rigidus, which basically means arthritis of the joint of the big toe. And rigidus just means it doesn't move much anymore. So this is an x-ray showing arthritis of the big toe joint called the MTP joint. And patients with this problem um, will often have difficulty walking without shoes because the joint can't really cope with the stress of the uneven ground. It's worse than uneven ground, so things like sand and hills and those sorts of things. And they might feel like clicking or a catching and have difficulty with doing things like running and pivoting. Um, in general, the pain is just in this area here, which we've marked out on the diagram there, and you may actually feel a bony protuberance on the top. Now, those rock bottom sole shoes can be useful for those patients as well. Um, injections can be useful for those patients. Um, and uh, occasionally the joint needs to be fused, as is shown in the x-ray here, so it doesn't move anymore. Now, the last one we're going to talk about in terms of conditions that cause foot pain is something called hallux valgus. Now, hallux valgus means that the big toe points to, towards the, less, the lesser toe, so the little toe.
And it's very common in women, particularly wear high heel shoes. Shoes also runs in families and patients with a flatter style of foot. And as you can see here in the arrow, it points towards the little toe. And you often get a bump on the inside of the of the foot known as a bunion. Now, wearing wider style of shoes, as we're going to draw here, can help um, because it doesn't crowd the toes and can be less painful. Often the um, this problem will be difficult with shoe wear. That's where you're really going to find a problem. Occasionally, you can put something called a toe spacer, so between the second and the big toe to push the toe across. But as soon as you take the spacer out, the um, toe will move back to where it normally is but we're trying to correct that back into that straight position and sometimes then people in an operation to do that although it does come with a risk of recurrence so hopefully you enjoyed our video today um, please subscribe to the foot neck orthopedic surgeon take a look at one of our other videos here and thank you very much thanks for listening